So in this MLB news and rumors video, I want to talk about some of the latest regarding the 2023-24 MLB offseason, the latest news regarding the trade market, the latest news regarding free agency, basically all things relating to the 2023-24 offseason in the MLB. I'm going to be going over in this video. Let's get right into it. So for the first MLB news item, I want to talk about the Tampa Bay Rays possibly trading away Isaac Paredes to the Mariners or the Blue Jays this offseason. So MLB MLB deadline news on Twitter or X tweeted out, the Tampa Bay Rays are expected to listen to trade offers for infielder Isaac Paredes uh, per John Morosi. Morosi notes that the Mariners and the Blue Jays are among the teams with interest in Paredes. So in my personal opinion, this would actually be a pretty cool um, acquisition for both the Mariners and the Blue Jays to make. The Rays, of course, are sort of in a fire sale mode this offseason, it seems like. Uh, there's been trade rumors regarding Randy Arozarena. Now Isaac Paradis is into the mix. Uh, they, of course, have Tyler Glass now on the trade market as well. So times could be a little bit different in Tampa Bay for next year, perhaps a bit of a reset year. But if, but if there's any team out there uh, that you have full faith in potentially winning these trades, it has to be the Rays because of how they've built their franchise uh, for the last you know 20 plus years. So uh, the Rays, this is what they do with their franchise. They sort of get players um, for, you know, cheap uh they get those guys for their you know team controlled years and then once they get too expensive they got to look to trade them elsewhere and sort of restock the covers per se that way but as noted by John Morosi here, the Mariners and the Blue Jays are among the teams with some interest. And the Mariners have sort of been a team to keep an eye on the last couple of days. They've made two pretty big time trades of note to clear up some more cap space and, you know, cut some payroll. Uh, they, of course, traded away Eugenio Suarez to the Diamondbacks. Uh, they just recently traded away Jared Kalnick and Marco Gonzalez yesterday uh, to the Atlanta Braves. So now the Mariners have about $30 plus million dollars in cap space this year. Could they be swinging for the fence and making a big time trade for a Juan Soto, perhaps? Maybe a Randy or Rosarena, perhaps? Could this be, as noted here, an Isaac Paredes trade? Uh, perhaps could this be a free agency place? Whatever the case may be, the Mariners are definitely a team to keep an eye on, but also the Blue Jays as well. The last couple of days, the Blue Jays have been linked to uh, Shohei Otani and Juan Soto, uh, both on the free agency market and, and on the trade market. So uh, the Blue Jays might look to make a pretty big time splash to their team. Now, in case you guys are unfamiliar, Isaac Paredes uh, actually had himself a pretty good year this past year. Uh, he can play third base, second base, first base. So he's pretty versatile around the infield. He's a right-handed bat. Uh, he only, you know, he's only um, under team control until 2027. So this guy has about four years left um, under team control. So uh, the Rays could definitely get back a lot for him, I would imagine. This past year for Isaac Paredes uh, in uh, Tampa Bay, he put up a 4.2 WAR season, 123 hits, 31 home runs, a 250 batting average average 71 runs scored on uh, 90, 98 rbis one stolen base and on base of 352 40 a uh, 488 slugging an ops of 840 and an ops plus of 131 so uh just an incredible start to his career for isaac paredes uh in tampa bay he definitely has a great future in this league now could he see himself on another team uh come the start of the 2024 um opening day it very well could happen but we'll keep an eye on the race making some big time trades regarding randy arose arena tyler glass now and isaac paredes uh, this 2023-24 MLB offseason. So sticking with the trade market for the next uh, news item, I want to talk about a potential Corbin Burns trade to the San Diego Padres. So once again, MLB deadline news on Twitter or X tweeted out, the San Diego Padres have expressed interest in, in Milwaukee Brewers starting pitcher Corbin Burns per um, S. Kevin Ace. Now, this is a little interesting and a little bit head scratching if you ask me. So, is it surprising first off that Corbin Burns is talked about in trade rumors? No. I've uh, just sort of given his relationship with the Brewers front office, uh, his comments he made, I believe it was last year during spring training, uh, the fact that he is a pending free agent beyond this year. He's probably going to get traded prior to the start of the 2024 um, MLB season. How is it going to be to the Padres? I never really thought this would have been a place for him, but from a baseball perspective, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The Padres are going to be losing out on Blake Snell, who won the Cy Young Award this past year, who's departed the team in free agency. All signs indicate as well that this uh, Padres team has to cut some cap space. Uh, financially speaking, they're in a little bit of distress. So I'm not really too sure why trading for Corbin Burns would really make a lot of sense. Unless, of course, you think that financially speaking, you're able to get him to a fair team-friendly deal that I guess could be in the cards uh, for the Padres. And if they're able to sort of land someone uh, like Corbin Burns to be the ace of this team next year, they could very well get back to the playoffs i fully do believe that without skipping a beat so corbin burns this past year for the brewers put himself uh put up a pretty solid year once again putting up a 3.5 war 10 wins eight losses an era of 3.39 
32 games played, 193 innings pitched with 200 strikeouts and a whip of 1.069. So Corbin Burns, of course, uh, did win the National League Cy Young Award back in 2021. He actually has been an all-star as well for the last three years. His ERA has ticked up a little bit each of the last three years, though. Uh, 2.43 in 2021, 2.94 in 2022, and last year, a 3.39. So it's definitely trending in the wrong direction, but for Corbin Burns, who's only going to be, I believe, 29 years old next year, this could very well be a nice little test sample for the Padres and if it works out great sign up to a big time extension if it doesn't you could always look to flip them again at the 2024 MLB trade deadline uh, to sort of cut your losses there. Perhaps you just let them walk for free agency, qualify them, and get back a draft pick in return. That could be a possibility as well for the Padres. So I guess we'll keep an eye on the Padres potentially making a pretty big-time move via the trade market. Uh, could Corbin Burns be their guy? I would not have thought so a couple weeks ago, but maybe as we get deeper and deeper into the 2024 MLB offseason, it could be a possibility. So also to keep a note as well, Corbin Burns is from Bakersfield, California, so the idea of him returning closer to home and perhaps taking a hometown discount per se uh, could be the thought process here but your guess is pretty much as good as mine leave all your thoughts down below so for the next MLB news item for today I want to talk about um, a report of the St. Louis Cardinals shopping around Dylan Carlson this offseason on the trade market so MLB rumors on Twitter or X tweeted out report the St. Louis Cardinals shopping Dylan Carlson the New York Yankees and San Francisco Giants are interested now Dylan Carlson's a pretty intriguing player that did not have a very good year whatsoever last year for the Cardinals. This, this whole Cardinals team just had a disastrous year last year. They, of course, added some more starting pitching to the team, getting Lance Lynn, getting Sonny Gray, and getting Kyle Gibson. So definitely a little bit older, but their or their uh, batting order is still pretty much the same as last year. So that's why someone like Dylan Carlson could very well be on the open market, getting back perhaps some more arms in return for their bullpen or for their starting rotation. Uh, Dylan Carlson could possibly fetch that on the trade market. Now, Dylan Carlson, as I mentioned before last year, it wasn't a very pretty year for him putting up a 0.54 season, 48 hits, 5 home runs, a 219 average, a 27 RBIs, 3 stolen bases, and on base of 318, 333 slugging, an OPS of 651, and an OPS plus of 79. So for Dylan Carlson, what has, uh, I guess what's going for Dylan Carlson in his direction here is that he's only 25 years old and he's a switch hitting outfielder. So if you are the Yankees per se, the idea of adding a lefty bat to your lineup that's just 25 years old could be pretty intriguing. Uh, same goes, of course, uh, for the Giants looking for some more offense as well on that team. So Dylan Carlson's probably going to be one of those trades where you're trading for him at a decreased value. So uh, for the Yankees, per, you know, for instance, could they be trading for Dylan Carlson at a bit of a discount? They absolutely could. And could the upside be there towards more of like a league average player, uh, perhaps a platoon option in the outfield? The variable it could be. So the idea of Dylan Carlson getting traded for pennies on the dollar could be pretty intriguing to teams out there like the Giants and the Yankees. The Giants, of course, could use some more help as well with someone like Michael Conforto leaving the team and some other holes in their outfield as well um, prevailing this offseason. So could, you know, potentially uh, Dylan Carlson be going out west to the Giants? He very well could be. Could he be going out east to the Yankees? He also could be as well. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on the uh, Cardinals being more active on the trade market this offseason, perhaps trading away some of their bats for some pitching heading into 2024. So for the next news item, I want to talk about free agency where the New York Mets have talked to Michael A. Taylor, formerly of the Minnesota. To twins. So uh, Metsmerized online on Twitter or X tweeted out reports the New York Mets have talked to Michael A. Taylor and there is a link to, uh, you know right beside this to another article a uh, hashtag Mets hashtag let's go Mets. So as I mentioned before if you guys want to check out MetsmerizedOnline.com the link to this tweet is down below in the description of this video but Michael A. Taylor could actually be a pretty cool uh, signing for this Mets team to make. The Mets made a pretty uh, the Mets made some you know decent signings a couple days ago more depth signings by getting Joey Wendell. Uh, and also getting a uh, Luis Severino. So adding some more um, arms to the bullpen or arms to the rotation in Luis Severino and adding an infielder option in Joey Wendell uh, for more of a depth piece there. So Michael A. Taylor could very well be a nice player for this Mets outfield in 2024 if he were to go there uh, last year for the Twins. He actually had himself a pretty solid season, putting up a 1.9 more, 78 hits, 21 home runs, a 220 average, uh, 51 RBIs, 13 stolen bases, and on base of just 278 though, 442 slugging and OP. OPS of 720 and an OPS plus of 94. So Michael A. Taylor showed a bit of power last year in his bat for the Twins. 
He, of course, won the World Series championship back in 2019 as well uh, and was a, a Gold Glove Award winner as well, I believe, in the year 2021 20, uh, with the Royals. So uh, Michael A. Taylor, pretty solid year this past year for the Twins. The Twins sort of had an excess amount of outfielders um, on their roster, so that's why uh, someone like uh, Michael A. Taylor was not brought back. So uh, could Michael A. Taylor be an option for the Mets? He very well could be, especially, too, if you want to give Brandon Nimmo perhaps uh, some less reps in center, you want to move him around to the uh, corner outfield or whatever the case may be there perhaps you move Michael A. Taylor to the corner whatever the case may be if you want to add a little bit more pop to your bat uh, and pop to your lineup as well and a little bit more power uh, Michael A. Taylor can provide that being a 21 home run guy this past year does he get on base a ton not really uh, but could he be a player that can play some pretty solid defense and be a nice veteran presence uh, on a short-term deal so he's going to be 33 years old next year so could this be maybe like a one or a two-year contract for Michael A. Taylor hopefully uh, providing some more leadership coming off the bench or being a you know a platoon starter whatever the case may be there in New York next and he very well could be. So we'll keep an eye on the Mets making another, I would say, lesser known signing by getting Michael A. Taylor, but a pretty good one nonetheless if it were to happen this offseason. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video as always. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.